Oops. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Exploring 3D Experience Works Live. I guess we'll ditch that webcam. My name is John Margarano. I am one of your hosts, joined by Gian Khaleesi. We are both industry process consultants at Adasso Systems SolidWorks, usually located in Waltham, Massachusetts. And with us today is the simulation expert, Michael Steves. We would like to welcome Michael. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, I'll go ahead and hide my webcam now because we have some ground to cover today. So this is session number 17, and if you're joining us for the first time, thank you so much. But if you've been with us, um, you know, you might know some of these, uh, these answers, but we just want to provide some information for some people who are just joining us for the first time. Like, what is, is, uh, what is 3D Experience Works? So if you're familiar with SolidWorks, then you might know that SolidWorks is one of the many software companies that have been acquired by Dassault Systems over the years. And SolidWorks has come a long way over the past quarter century. At this point, it's so powerful and functional that sometimes it seems like there's really nothing SolidWorks can't do. And that is, of course, until you consider the power of Dassault Systems' other brands. So Dassault has been accumulating all kinds of software brands with the end goal of combining them all into a one-stop shop for all engineering business needs. And this is called the 3D Experience Platform. So what the 3D Experience Platform is, you know, you might have an understanding of what that is, but that still doesn't really answer our question what exactly 3D Experience Works is. And right here up on the screen, you see an engineering design process. You can Google an image for this and you get something very similar. And it's basically uh, just a process of how you get a product to market. And the 3D experience works um, kind of all fits in together along these engineering processes. And of course, SolidWorks is at the core of it all. So it's, easy to see how the 3d experience platform just encompasses this whole process and now we're going to show you some of it in action today now we usually do this live but we have video ties to the presentation today so we can show you as much as we possibly can in the allotted time now there is so many there are so many um tools on the on 3d experience works and we have to select just a few today to show you in a presentation or also be here for days. So to present today's plan, I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague and co-host, Gian Khaleesi. Gian. Thanks, John. So today's plan, we're gonna be looking at some of the SolidWorks and Simulia functionality today, which is why we brought Michael Steves here to join us. So I'm gonna be playing the role of, I'm gonna be playing the role of the designer and using some of those SolidWorks tools, 3D Creator and 3D Sculptor are cloud-based CAD applications for parametric and subdivision modeling, all completely in the browser. And Michael is gonna be using the structural performance engineer role, one of our Simulia roles, um, all available in 3D Experience Works to help validate our design as we go through and kind of bounce back and forth to try and perfect this design of our subject today, which is this very stylish pair of earbud of wireless earbud headphones. And here are just a few renderings of the final design. And these renderings were actually produced using 3D Render, which is another piece of that big 3D Experience Works functionality that might just show up in a future session of this webinar. Here's an image of the earbud actually in use in a human ear that I created using 3D Sculptor. Once again, all rendered completely in the cloud and we created the ear itself so we could test how comfortable the earbud will fit. So what are the big ideas, key takeaways and things that you should look out for in this demo? Well, they're all here. This is all simulation driven design. So if that interests you, then you're in the right place as Michael and I will be going back and forth, collaborating seamlessly using the same data set, the same design data, and you'll definitely see some built-in governance tools throughout as we revise and, and iterate on our design. So let's just jump right into it, starting with the design. Now, here's the assembly that I created using the earbud itself. 
and the ear that I modeled as a reference for testing. So if I jump into the ear part, I can scroll back and show that one subdivision surface I, use, I created in X shape. So right now, I'm using our cloud-based parametric modeling tool, XDesign, which is part of the 3D Creator tool. But I actually want to edit this subdivision surface. So all I need to do is just switch over to X shape, which is part of the 3D Sculptor role. Just click the X key, and now I can switch over to X shape. And you might have actually seen that I could have uh, switched over to X sheet metal too, if I had any sheet metal parts to make. But for now, we're just working on this subdivision model and let's just get right into it. So now that we're in X shape, let's jump into the subdivision surface of the ear and see how this all works. So I created this whole surface from one flat surface I started with. Now I did have some scan data as a reference, but I just used this robot tool, that little triad, to just push and pull different edges, faces and nodes into place. And I can add and take away more control loops like you just saw by inserting loops around the entire model. And you know I could pre-select and just delete them with the delete key on my keyboard or just control Z to undo our favorite thing. For more localized control, I would just subdivide the faces like you just saw there, turn, changing one face into five faces. Hence where the term subdivision modeling comes from. So we'll just undo that again and let's exit the subdivision environment. Now for our CAD users out there, you should know all of our traditional surfacing tools work perfectly with this subdivision surface. They act the same way. So the next thing I did was just extrude the edges of our ear surface to see to put those walls there that you now see and then finally just added just filled in that last surface and then knitted it all together into a usable solid so now we have this ear part using both x design and x shape to create and i think that that that's pretty much all we had left to do on the ear the ear bud i already created and that's ready to go so I'll just give this assembly a quick save so I can hand it off to Michael to run a fit test and see how comfortably the earbud sits in this ear. Now, there's many options I have on how I could actually share this with Michael, you know, using an instant message. I could use tasks. But in this case, I'm going to comment right on the model and I'm going to at mention Michael by name so that he gets a notification. And that's really it. Now I can just hand it right back to Michael and he'll get that notification ready to go. That's a very good looking ear, Gian. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's almost like you had some 3D scan data to kind of guide you in that design process. But as I was thinking about the you know earbud itself, I'm asking, you know, why wouldn't you just kind of either copy surfaces or offset surfaces of the ear so that we can get a good fit? Well, that's a valid point. And, you know, if the goal of this was to create like perfectly custom earbuds just for me, then yeah, that would that would be perfect. I would just take a 3D scan of my ear or I could use the ear that I have here and I could just use traditional surfacing tools and an offset surface. But for this case, we actually want to create earbuds that will fit many ears, you know, just as comfortably. So we might only be going through it with one ear model today. But part of the reason why I actually built that ear in X shape is so that we can adjust the ear itself to kind of mimic normal you know, ear shapes and variations in ear shape so that we can simulate it with a whole bunch of different kind of geometries. So if you're asking for more work there, Michael, you found it. It sounds great. No, this is a great project to work on. Thank you for having me here. So what I'm gonna take you through in regards to this, doing some virtual prototyping with this earbud and the ear that John modeled up is looking at two areas um, of consideration. One is contact pressure, right? That, that, that comfort that you may have when you put that earbud into your ear. Are there gonna be any pressure points that we want to avoid? How can we change the, the, the shape of that earbud to have a better fit? And then we'll get into later a drop test um, study looking at you know, how, if you're dropping these earbuds from you know, ear height, uh, how are they going to perform when they hit the ground? Are they going to break? What type of stresses and displacements do we see? So we're early in the design process, John. So let's take a look at, um, at this initial design and and how it looks. Now, where where is that model located? Well, you notified me, so I sure enough get a notification there in the top right. When I click on it, 
it brings me right to our 3D Space app and opens it up uh, in the previewer so I can rotate around, I can take a look at you know this quality model that you produced. And I can start answering some of the questions in my head of how am I going to set this up? And when I'm ready, I can just select that exact physical product that you made. Again, that notification took me right there. I can then go to the compass and choose my simulation app to create my study. So in this case, structural mechan or mechanical scenario creation is the app I'm using um, to you know, kick this process off. We give it a title. So we're doing a fit test here. The naming conventions automatically figured out. Uh, we choose our structural analysis case here. And you know, what's my next step? Well, built in, we have an assistant and this walks you through. So from you know, the first step here is creating the finite element model. We're able to use some enhanced, recently enhanced um, initialization to automatically capture those bodies and mesh them. Um, from there, I can move forward with setting up the static step. Now there's actually three steps that I do here to create this. I'm just showing you one today um, and uh, this, again, tells us how we're going to solve. So just a static analysis, and we're doing an interference fit. So of course we need some material properties. So for the ear, I have a, you know, a material similar to a rubber. And for the earbud itself, we have an ABS plastic. So we're able to quickly search in that material palette uh, to pick the materials of interest. Um, from there, we don't have any connections. We can go right to interactions. And I mentioned interference fit. We're also leveraging some of the powerful technology of Abacus here for, for general contact. So I just have to turn on a couple options here to say, yep, let's use interference fits and let's specify on this initial step, a zero friction contact. From there, for our general contact, we just specify those two things um, that I just specified. So for the interference and for that frictionless uh, contact, from there, we specify our restraints, um, especially for this initial step, we, we're gonna hold on to everything here um, as the interference gets resolved between the ear and earbud. So we'll hold on to the outside of that ear model that you made and hold on to the uh, earbud itself. From here, there's no loadings. Um, we're able to do an update to create the mesh and then we're ready to simulate. There is a warning there for kind of the lower quality mesh that I have defined, but for this initial case, that's okay. We'll go ahead and proceed um, and, um, and get some results. And we've talked about simulation on 3D Experience Live before. We can run that locally or on the cloud. So let's fast forward here a little bit and start taking a look at some of the results. And animating the displacement plot here, we see a couple things that stand out. There's a lot of rotation that goes on in that uh, stem of the earbud. So that can cause for some additional contact pressure, some discomfort for the user. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The other thing to keep in mind is what we mentioned earlier, the that, that comfort parameter, this contact pressure that goes on. And here's where we can see those hot spots um, as it's interacting with the ear. So it's over, over one megapascal that's going on. So these hotspots, I'm gonna use these as a communication tool to you, Gian, to you know, refine this analysis. And just like you notified me, I'm notifying you just with a different object here. This is the physics simulation. So I can go right into that object, go into the comments, tag you, and ask you to please review them, right? So there's two things I want you to do. We want to rotate the stem to counteract that rotation of the earbud naturally fitting into the ear. The second one is obviously changing the bud itself to um, reduce that contact pressure and, and have a better fit in the ear. So let's do that and then I'll rerun the analysis um, when you've got that those changes done. And let's capture this as revisions a little bit, shall we? Yeah, that sounds good to me. It's definitely gonna be useful to just create a new revision so that we can jump back to where we left off in, in case we don't get the changes we're looking for, but I see that notification pop right up that now I have been tagged in a comment there. And, you know, I'm right where you left me where I where I get in here. But once I click on this, it actually opens a simulation file in a preview that anyone with permission to see the file can preview. No need to have a CAD license or a simulation license. Anyone with access can look at this preview and it looks like the earbud rotates down, like you were saying, Michael. So that should be a pretty easy fix. Maybe we can rotate the stem upward a little bit. And maybe we want to see that contact pressure now. So we can actually see any of the results that Michael published up here and now see where on the earbud 
we, where that high contact pressure actually exists after we hide the ear itself. And it looks like we have quite a bit of pressure right here, around 0.6 megapascals. And that's not the only point too. We've got a few areas of this. It looks like the underside of this earbud, we have even more. So I can zoom in there. Wow, that's, that's some red. So that's nearing one full megapascal, which equivocates roughly to 150 pound force per square inch. So we're definitely gonna need to tweak this design a bit. So let's close this out and jump back to our model go into full screen and let's just start editing. We'll create this new revision, uh, new revision of the assembly in case we wanna go back to that point. I'll just add a comment to this revision once this dialog box pops up and just you know add a simple comment to let myself know which one this was for future reference. In this case, I'm updating the, the interference fit. And now, as that is created, I'll be able to either open up the new revision or just keep editing the one that I have. But in this case, I do want to open up the new revision. And then I want to create a new revision of the earbud itself. So that built-in governance, all I have to do is activate this part. Same way I would if I wanted to edit this part in the context of the, of the assembly. I'll activate it and then use that same new revision button. Only now it'll be used on the component instead of the assembly. So once again, prompted to add a quick comment. I can just add the same thing once again, or I could have left it blank if I wanted to. And then I can just keep working in the old revision or replace the old revision in, with the new one that we just created in the assembly we're currently editing. So that was created. Now that earbud is replaced in the assembly and I can just double click on the earbud again to activate it. In doing so, I'm just prompted to update if there's any updates available. And now I can just start editing once again. Now, one thing we'll note is in order to see the interference fit, it's going to be a little difficult to see what's going on in the model with, you know, the ear itself being so transparent. So I can just turn up the opacity of individual components, and this will help us be able to see where that interference lies in our assembly here. A section view might also help us so to see what's going on in this model. So I can turn that on. I think the ZX plane will probably be best for us. From here, we can see even where the interference starts a little bit with that blue color where you stop seeing kind of the gap there. So let's now just edit that subdivision surface. That is kind of the bulb of this earbud. And in doing so, you can actually see the parametric feature right there for the stem itself. That was all an X design, and then I just combined it with the subdivision body. But now in the subdivision environment, we can simply just grab any faces, edges, points on this body and watch as that interference just disappears. So see that brown color as I, create, as I grab any of these faces or edges and I start to move them, you can see the bleed through of that brown color of the ear kind of disappear or just dissipate a little bit. You know, we don't want no interference, but we want less so that we don't have such a high contact pressure. And then when I'm done with this, I'll just exit this, the subdivision environment once again. And now that we're done using the subdivision tools in X shape, I think we can move to X design to make the changes to the stem area of the earbud. So just switching over once again. Notice that we can leave things on like the section view and it'll actually stay left on in, in the graphics area. That way, if we switch apps and we still need to see that section, you know, it's there for us, but we don't need it right now. I just want to scroll back in our design features to, uh, to an earlier state. Now at this point in our design, the bulb and the stem are actually two different bodies. So all I need to do is just use a move body command and rotate the stem around its Z axis by about six degrees. Think that six should be good so we'll accept that and yeah that looks pretty good to me we'll scroll everything forward and then i think we can give this part a save and now it's time to hand this back to michael and see how we did with those changes are those those any better 
Yeah, so this looks, I mean, watching you, I think you've uh, done a nice job addressing that. You hit on a good point. Of course, we want a little bit of interference because we do want, you know, some amount of contact pressure in there so that your bud just doesn't fly out. Um, but yeah, let's let's take a look at my process here because you've made a new revision to the assembly, a new revision to the, the earbud itself. What does that look like for me? Well, similar to my simulation study, I can create revisions of these studies as well to be in line with the revision progress um, of, your, of your assembly and model. So using the same technology here on the platform with the Collaborative Lifecycle app, I can create a new revision of my earbud fit test assembly. And this does a number of things for me um, to reduce my amount of, of rework. So actually similar to before, to actually open this up, I just reselect it and open it up in the mechanical scenario creation app that we were using before. This opens up in my local app and right away you can see that we have the same model in there as well as some of the, the same um, boundary conditions in the scenario. So really at this point I just need to replace the model um, with the new revision. So there's a list of all the revisions available of that one. There's the new one that you created, John. We'll go ahead and select that and it updates uh, inside the inside my simulation study and it even created a new revision of the mesh as well so if there's other mesh refinements or changes we wanted to make there we can go ahead and do so but otherwise my my boundary conditions you know my, my fixtures the contact condition all those properties are already set up so here i just do a refresh and it updates everything for me and now what well i'm ready to solve so in this case it was just as simple as that of performing that updates and rerunning the simulation. So let's fast forward here again and take a look at the results here um, of our uh, new revision of the analysis. So there are two things that we we're interested in, right? How did we do on our contact pressure? Well, sure enough here, the legend is a giveaway here. It's very small. Of course, we have some hotspots there as we look into the, the, um, the geometry, but the value there is almost zero. So we have a very comfortable fit here going on. Might be a couple more modifications, maybe a new revision here is in order, but uh, let's take a look at the rotation um, as well. So contact pressure is looking good in the ear and on the earbud. Uh, we can toggle over to the uh, displacements and, and see that sure enough, yeah, minimal rotation there that's going on. Um, so, well, wow, we even have a better fit and, you know, minimal rotation, the stem of that earbud isn't coming in. So this is looking really good. So I think we've done a really good job on just on this one iteration, this one revision, Gian. Uh, so I think I'm going to move forward with uh, doing a drop test analysis. So this is actually where me as the, even though I'm doing a lot of analyst activities, I can even get into X design. Um, and create my own little playground or sandbox of how I want to perform these different, you know, physical tests. This is virtual prototyping after all, so let's try a bunch of different things. So inside X Design, uh, I can open up those same earbuds, put them in, um, and I've even modeled a surface there as the floor. So I can rotate, I can tweak um, everything that I wish to kind of set up my my little my little test here. And when I'm ready, we will just open this up again in the same simulation app and get to work creating this. So let me show you what it looks like and how this is different um, from setting up the interference fit and what it looks like to create a drop test study. A lot of the steps are the same and we also have the assistant. So again, we give it a title. This will be make it easier to, to find in the future. Um, we're still choosing structural here. And we will use our assistant to walk us through um, the process. So similar to before, one of the first steps is creating the uh, finite element model. Um, again, using the aut automatic options here, it's automatically creating, um, defining the, the properties um, and the, the mesh settings for our components. So we do get a message here letting us know that the, the floor itself actually doesn't have any properties. So let me let me show you uh, what it looks like to create um, properties for that. So of course, before I proceed though, we will do, specify a step. And this is one of the uh, unique portions is defining the explicit dynamic step. So this is actually for this drop test, we're doing 50 thousandths of a second. So a very small time increment to account for the displacement stresses and contacts um, as a result of, of this drop. Okay, now let's take a look at parts. So we do have some missing properties there. The assistant does a great job letting me know 
Um, we've got some visual indications there on our solid sections, uh, letting us know that they're incomplete. So a double click there lets us go in and define the ABS material uh, for our earbud. So we repeat that for the other earbud as well. And one thing I wanna uh, make sure that you know, you're aware of here is we're using the material palette. And for like John and myself, as we're you know, going through this demonstration, this uh, material library is the same material library that we have access to. So as he's using materials there, I'm using materials in my simulation studies. Uh, they're easily shared um, and one update gets updated to everyone right away. Okay, we're now defining the um, rigid body for our floor. So this is just infinitely stiff floor here, um, but we do need to specify some, some you know, thickness and some uh, material properties there uh, to make sure it's fully, fully defined. So in this case, we're specifying that ABS material for the floor here, but it doesn't really matter. It's the simulation study is treating it as infinitely stiff uh, with that rigid body definition. All right, no connections here. Let's move on to interactions. Uh, it's actually more simple here. Uh, we just specify a contact property for that friction. Here in this case, we'll do 0.2 for our coefficients and turn on our general contact. This is one of the big differentiators of why you're going to use uh, Simulia, you know, leveraging the Abacus technology, is that one general contact specifying our contact property is doing a lot of the heavy lifting here, uh, solving this scenario. What is our scenario? It's a drop test. So of course we have gravity defined there in that vertical direction going down and we specify an initial velocity. And we can use our selection filters here to say, okay, let's pick those two earbud bodies and specify an initial velocity. So this is something that was calculated um, from dropping at about ear height um, if you're a six foot uh, person. So about 4.2 meters per second going down. From here, we would do a refresh and solve, but wait, Gian, you were making changes to this model as I was setting this up. I was, yeah, I shelled it out. And I added some, some stylistic details, a couple holes. So go ahead and give it a refresh. Let me know yep. if you can see my changes. I do, I do a global refresh here. It lets me know that sure enough, I have three objects to refresh. And um, once that refresh is done, uh, we can see those changes to the geometry. It looks great. So in this case, we didn't have to go through revisions in order to do these updates. We can do it on the fly. So these changes look great. We're much closer to that you know, finalized model. And now I can go ahead and perform the simulation, again, running locally or leveraging the um, HPC, the high performance um, computational power of the cloud to run our study here. So here we can see, wow, one, two, three, four or five interactions. I don't know, you might be able to count better than I can, um, but being able to um, capture those complex interactions with the floor and within the earbuds themselves uh, to you know, predict the performance here. Take a look at the displacements, the stresses, and we can even see those stress waves as uh, things are oscillating around um, in that model. So this not only looks really cool, but it's also very informative to let us know, uh, are our earbuds going to break? So we can answer that question, move forward with the design process. But here we've only captured two different you know, simulation scenarios, that interference fit and also the drop test. You know, and we, could, we talked about increasing my workload earlier, Gian, Definitely so, because there's other you know cases of if you're hanging upside down, if you're running, you're jogging, you're you're subject to um, a variety of loads as you exercise with these earbuds in. Are they going to fall out? Well, we can answer those questions and more uh, using the power of Simulia on the 3D Experience platform. So thanks for having me on and, and help uh, perform some simulation-driven design, improving your earbuds. Yeah, thank you, Michael. I think as a next step, maybe we should just uh, take some real scan data and see how well these puppies actually fit. But uh, for now, just wanna wrap up and once again, reiterate those things that we just saw, that simulation driven design. We were able to collaborate seamlessly on the same data and land on a heavily simulation driven design of any earbud to improve the fit. And obviously we could have done so, we could have made a ton of improvements and you know quick edits as we went along but we showed as much as we possibly could in the allotted time and of course those built-in governance tools allowing us to revise and iterate our design quickly and easily without having to be hands-on managing the data or anything so what's next for you as one of our viewers well you can learn more about 3d experience works 
which includes all the tools that we just used, 3D Creator, 3D Sculptor for design, and Structural Performance Engineer, Structural Mechanics Engineer. You can learn about those in the first link, which also is in the chat box of the webinar, and it'll be sent out in the follow-up email after the conclusion of today's webinar too. All three of these links will. Um, but these are the places you can go. Learn more about 3D Experience Works. You can register for a free trial of some of our design tools, 3D Creator and 3D Sculptor, what I used to actually create the earbuds and ear today. And finally, if you wanna watch previous sessions or register for the next one, you can use that third link. And we hope to see you at our next session another couple Mondays from now.